I did a, a experiment about, you know, localization of bass. We talk about that, right? Like, what frequency can we localize bass? So, I did a little experiment. I have a, a sub that's kind of in the center of the room. Well, I have lots of subs right now in the in the theater, right? So, it's kind of interesting. I just played some pink noise from 120 hertz down. I'm, I don't remember the exact frequency range, actually. It was a while ago. But uh, I think 150 hertz and down. Pink noise, right? So, from 20 hertz to that. Um, and I did that, played it at a decent volume, but not so much that things were shaking and not so much that the driver itself was making any noise, just a decent volume where you could, you could definitely hear it. Right. And then I asked my, my wife and kids to come in. I, I had them do it separately, but I said, point to the speaker that's making the sound. All right. So they're walking around the room and I swear like five minutes, they could not find where this thing was coming from. Mm-hmm. Right. And th- so I'm like, dang, I thought I could find out. I, I thought I could tell, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it turns out, I think I-, I could, and I know why I could, and they couldn't, right? And this goes back to kind of the Easter egg hunt, right? When you're trying to find something, you know, the hot and cold game, right? Yeah. When you get closer, hotter, right? Okay, so what you're used to when it comes to sound is when you get closer to it, it gets louder, right? So you're trying to hear, where is it getting louder? Mm. But because they're going in and out of nulls, they're walking around this room, right? They're walking into a, a null. They're like, okay, I'm further. They walk into a peak, and now they're like, uh, it's around here somewhere. Yeah. Right? But what's tricky is there's lots of uh, places where you might be either in a peak. If they, if they went closer to the wall, they're like, okay, they started thinking it's around here somewhere. They move mm-hmm. towards the corner. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's got to be here. The sound is louder. So that's why it's so tricky is because of typical things that you would use to figure out localization, which is level, right? Just basic level was tricking them. Yeah. Right? They're in, they're like, it, they couldn't find the, the thing. Yeah. Um, the reason why I was able to tell though is maybe first of all, because I knew where it was, right? So I had to, tr- it's hard. You can't turn it off, right? If you know where it is, you can't unknow where it is. <laughs> right. But I could kind of perceive a difference between whether... Oh, oh. so here's the second part of the experiment, right? And this is my test. I think I could tell if it was louder on this side versus this side. So I did a test where I say, okay, I'd have them stand in a place and I say, does it sound louder to your right or to your left? And they would almost always get it right. They could tell... Mm-hmm. That it was, you know, wherever the sub was, they could tell it was louder on that side of the room, right? And then I'd ask them, was it louder to the front or the back, right? And then I'd move them to a different location, a different quadrant. And they were yeah. they were correctly kind of like triangulating. Toning in on it, yeah, yeah. Right? So I thought that was interesting that they could tell what area mm-hmm. it was at, but they couldn't pinpoint where it was at uh, using the typical yeah. techniques that we would use. So... That's it. That's that's the experiment. Show the audio. Make a video on that. <laughs> that's funny. The audio yeah. optom- optometrist. So, uh, what are the results of that? Basically, uh, is bass localizable, right? Below 150. Mm-hmm. Partially, partially, I would say yes. If you, if you're sitting in the same seat and you kind of know, like, all right, it's, it's a little bit louder in this there uh, mm-hmm. on this side. That's so that's cute. localizing, right? A little bit. You can't pinpoint it. You can't say it's right there. You can't walk around and find it, but you can tell that it's somewhat louder in a certain region, right? So yeah. kind of, here, kind of, over here. Kind of along that length, the same lines as that. There's a new thought, maybe it's a new thought that some brands are kind of pushing being able to intentionally put subwoofers here and here and so your Mm. brain can determine okay that base is happening from up here have you heard of that Mm -hmm. the whole directional base yeah yeah like what are your thoughts on that because i'm not sure i buy into that now i haven't experienced it yet but hey i'm gonna have to jump out all right brother aaron good seeing you bro glad to see you man later later peace um yeah so 
directional I mean, base. Kind of, it kind of goes along with what you're saying that we can kind of tell where base is, but I'm just wondering, is it even practical? You know what I mean? Mm, I do think I, do so I need to know where base is coming from in a movie. You know, the way I think about it is that it's different from localizing higher frequencies in that there are pressure zones. Mm -hmm. So let's say there's a quadrant, like you break up your room into four, sure. right? Right, correct. I would say you can kind of tell generally wh where the base is coming from just because you know your room. Mm -hmm. I don't know that if you went into, into a random theater that you'd be able to detect it as well, but yeah. if you're so familiar with your room, right. I feel like you would be able to tell if I were to move a sub around Mm -hmm. just because you're so familiar with your room and how sounds work in your room, right? Um, yeah, because I get the impression that, let's just say they, they put one in each corner of the room, uh, but they intentionally want your brain to know that, okay, that explosion happened from the front right instead of <laughs> just the room. I'm like, I, don't, I just don't know if that's, that would represent the real world. I mean, if you're I in an explosion, an explosion, man, you're just mm -hmm. going to feel it all over your body if it's like close proximity to you. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't yeah. think you're, I don't think in a real world you'd be like, yeah, I, I could definitely tell that that grenade landed behind me. I mean, I don't know. I'm you just, just thinking feel the when you're mixing, when you're mixing, right? So you have the option in Atmos mm -hmm. to put these explosions into all you know, all the speakers, right? right. So there's a right. basically you can make the object size small or big. Sure. An explosion would probably be you'd probably use a big object, right? Right. right. Those make a tiny little explosion exactly. that's like shaking Correct. your seats, right? Yeah. So just logically, they're probably gonna make an explosion activate mm -hmm. all the speakers anyway. Yeah. Right. On top of that, then you have the option of putting that sound into the LFE channel. Mm -hmm. Right. So LFE is just it doesn't there's no left or right it's just right, LFE. Correct. yeah correct so in a practical sense even if it did right yeah, even right. if you could kind of locate okay this my i know my subs over here because my my picture rattles over here <laughs> over here my door rattles when out so okay i can localize the base so what right mm -hmm. yeah in a it, i think the, the real question comes down to what would you rather have directional base where you can you can tell that it's this coming from back here or would you rather have all the speakers working together to create that virtual subwoofer mm -hmm. that one some yeah. smooth response to me that's a better use yeah. of the base. Yeah, like so, i said I, I'm, not, I'm not buying into it just yet i mean I've, I've heard some talks about it but and again i haven't heard it myself but i was just curious what your thoughts on on that was i guess you know what if it could do both if you didn't have to choose whether to have it work together. Mm -hmm. Let's say if it, it could do that and also yeah. keep whatever directional stuff. Yeah. Cool. Like, okay. And all right. If you would like to join us every week on Mondays at what time is it? About 6 p.m. Central, which is the best time. That's where I am. Make sure you join us at youtube.com slash daily high five. We out. <laughs>